Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about some of the leaked crucible information that was kind of dropped. So essentially we have all of the different stats, affixes, you know, that you can roll um, essentially on majority of things. Now do remember that this information was confirmed that not all of it may be accurate. It was, there was a comment by uh, one of the GDG devs. So uh, what we're going to be uh, doing is just hypothetically kind of talking about what has been shown. Now, because there are quite literally thousands to go through, um, I am only going to go through the shield weapon passive. The weapon passive, for sure, there is a fire multiplier that can roll, which is probably the strongest for damage, but it's kind of really weird to go through them because of the way they're all kind of grouped right now. So I'm just going to focus on the shield weapon passives. I feel these might be a little trickier to understand for the newer players as well. The weapon is, is typically a lot more straightforward. So with that being said, I went through all 600 of these and I kind of clipped out the ones that stood out. So let's go ahead and jump into them. All right. So the way this seems to work is your crucible tree kind of has like, um, you know, nodes that you would select. So you've got like tier one being the first tier two being the second three being the third and you know, so on. Um, make sure you stay till the end of the video because we've got the exclusive tier five righteous fire and fire trap passives that you don't want to miss. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the beginning. Uh, now, do note that these can also roll on energy shield bases. Um, so that is something... <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. That is something very important to understand. It doesn't matter what base shield you have, whether it's like armor or energy shield. Um, they're all pretty much the same, I believe, based off of the information we have seen. Sorry, my chat is, uh, is joking a little bit. They're making me laugh. Okay, so... Starting at the beginning, um, some obvious ones, life. I think life is always very good to get, right? There's no downside to it. So you've got different tiers of life rolls. Now, a lot of these are gonna have different tiers. For the most part, I'm only gonna show you the highest tier, right? This number on the left is the weighting, so it's how common it rolls. The higher the number, the more common it rolls. So you've got life rolls, you've got life and uh, percent life regen, you've got flat armor. It's so flat armor is not bad. You've got percent strength, which translates into a little bit of flat life with armor. You've got increased implicit uh, modifier magnitudes. So not really good by itself. Uh, I'd say the best use is if you have a minion shield with say 10% increased minion damage, it gives you 5% extra minion damage. Nothing insane. I do believe from what people are saying though with synthesized values, uh, which is not really very beginner friendly, this can kind of become sort of insane. We've also got like high sources of increased fire damage with minus fire res along with regular fire damage and a really cool one actually uh percent uh increased fire damage with physical damage from hits taken as fire of like all the stuff on this list i would personally game for the good life roll and probably this one here um this is definitely really good right for sure and the fire damage is good I'm a big fan of being tanky, so I like this conversion. So moving on to the next tier, let's go ahead and jump into here. So we've got here an interesting one on tier two. Now this resistance rolls on pretty much all of them. So I just clipped one to kind of show you. So the 40, you, you essentially gain 22 net resistance, which is not bad, right? Overall, it's just resistance. Um, you've got another interesting one, which is a minus uh, all elemental res. So six times three is 18. You're still getting chaos res out of it. So also a nice one. Um, this is kind of interesting. There are a lot of modifiers that have reduced armor, evasion, and energy shield. What's important to note is based off of what we've seen here, if you click this little thing here, which you can't because I made the screenshot, but you know, on the actual website for the PoE database, this is local to the item itself. So when a stat is local, it means it's only reducing the armor, evasion, and energy shield in this instance of the item. Since energy shield base shields don't have armor or evasion, that doesn't do anything, and the energy shield itself is useless for us, so this is kind of just like 14% alley res. So this is pretty good. Um, same thing with this, 14 alley res with minus block. We don't care too much about block. This is a very strong setup. 2% to all maximum elemental res. We lose minus five maximum chaos. If you have 70% chaos right instead of 75, you are fine, especially with the new mastery for armor protects against 10% of the uh, chaos hits you take. This is essentially almost like free elemental res. I would say if you do end up converting to the super late game version with divine flesh, 
um, this may lose some value. But in the earlier stages, if you don't have Divine Flesh, this is fantastic. Also, something to note, I would say most of you guys are never going to cap your Chaos Res. You don't lose a downside of lowering your max Chaos Res if you're not even at maximum Chaos Res. So if you're walking around with 22% Chaos Res, you're not hitting your cap. This is only beneficial for you. All right, uh, minus three chance to block, minus three chance to block, and minus three chance to block. Now, these three things here, um, there are a couple of other ones. I'm going to go ahead and just show these ones. Essentially, the Sanctuary one is going to give you, I believe, 12% elemental resistance. Um, oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, don't look at that POB because that corrupts it. That was weird. So that's 12% elemental resistance right there. Um, safeguard over here should be this one right here. I think it's eight Eli res. Um, and then you have Arcane Sanctuary, which I believe is 30% spell damage? Yeah. Um, so spell damage does not really work for Righteous Fire, but it does still work for your Fire Trap, and essentially it's an extra modifier. Not one of the best ones. I would definitely aim for some other ones, but I think it's worth noting. All right, moving into the T3 uh, slash... Is this T3, T4? Yeah, T3, T4. Okay, T3, T4. You've got 100 Dexterity. Gain no Inherent Bonus from Dexterity. We don't care about inherent bonus from dexterity. We're not evading. We're a jug. We don't need accuracy. We're a caster. This is fantastic. 15% uh, explicit life modifier. I believe this is just like a, a multiplier in increase to the life value. So flat life, hybrid life, percent life regen. Only good if you have very high values. Resistance modifier, same exact thing. 80% uh, increased endurance, frenzy, and power charge duration. Seems like very big quality of life. For example, when you're fighting a boss like, say, Shaper, uh, whenever you're going through the Shaper phases and you have to go back all the way to Shaper, there's a good chance your Endurance Charges drop off, right? 80% increase Endurance Charge generation might not drop off. So a lot of quality of life here. And then there's actually a lot. I think I missed a couple on this one. But a prime example, you lose a maximum power charge. What's that? I don't know what that is. We gain a minimum Frenzy and we gain a minimum Endurance. So the minimum endurance is not anything too crazy. The minimum frenzy is 4% more damage, 4% increased cast speed, and 4% increased attack speed. So that's really good. Also, I do know what power charges are. They have to do with crit. It doesn't really affect us, right? So not a problem there. All right, uh, moving on, we have one of the lowest weightings of anything on here. It's um, five. Uh, what that means is you are expected to live throughout your entire lifetime five times before you ever see this modifier. Don't count on it dropping. Uh, so Rampage is insanely good. Rampage uh, basically gives you super map zoom, a whole bunch of random buffs, but you're never going to see this, so let's not talk about it. Uh, all right, and then we have Determination Effect. Now, this is where uh, it gets a little interesting. These auras do cost extra. They cost extra, but they give you a lot. Now, the Malevolence one is not super good unless you're in an, a weird instance where you just have extra mana. But the determination one is actually very good. I'll have to see what we can do to kind of uh, squeeze in some extra reservation. The reason why I talk about this is determination gives you two big sources of armor. Flat armor and more armor. There are very few things in the game that give you more armor, right? Maybe I actually don't even know off the top of my head. There's probably something else, but this is why I talk about the determination one. Now, moving on though on here, you have a 50% chance to sap enemies when you block their damage. We're not really blocking very much, but it's free. Actually, yeah, Basalt Flask, that's another option. Sap reduces their damage. This one right here is not going to make it into the game. That's my theory. 100% chance to avoid being shocked. This basically means you don't need to run Tempest Shield. You get a free aura back. You can fit in Herald of Ash if you want to go explodey. You can fit in Aspect of the Spider. If you want to look at some very end game variants, you can look at the Storm Shroud Jewel and kind of understand the synergy there. Just look it up. Storm Shroud Jewel, not beginner friendly, very expensive, very insane node. Um, going on a little bit further, you take 50% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. This can be paired with other sources of critical damage reduction to essentially take no damage from critical strikes or no extra damage. So it's, pr it's pretty awesome, right? Again, you need a specific setup. Um, now some other gems to talk about. Our build gets very starved on gems, so getting any free gem is awesome. Level 25 Arrogance frees up a gem slot for our vitality. Um, level 1 Culling Strike, you can put your Frostbling set up there. Your Frostbling now has Culling Strike, 10% more damage. Uh, level 2 Enlighten, 
Uh, you can put your auras on your shield, get an enlightened slot. Maybe you can free up an aura node. Maybe we can squeeze something else in. Very nice. Level 2 enhance, only good in the dual curse setup. Enhance will scale the quality on your flammability and your Ellie weakness. Ellie weakness quality strips the res more, so enhance is very beneficial. Um, pretty nice. And then life tap, shield charge can go there, drop the life tap on shield charge, we're good to go. And now the long awaited righteous fire and fire trap nodes. Before we continue here, I'd like to say a word of thank you to our sponsor. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Let's jump into it. Fire trap and explosive trap throw an additional trap when used by a mine. There is a 0% chance that we use that in our build. Regenerate 15 mana per second while an enemy is in your Righteous Fire or Scorching Ray. Um, there is a 0% chance at this moment in time that we use that in our build. Maybe in, I don't know, uh, Jungron made like an EB Mind Over Matter Righteous Fire build. I don't know too much about it. I don't know how the flat mana interacts with like with the Mind Over Matter Eldritch Matter. I don't even know if it does. Uh, so there's that. Maybe Low Life Righteous Fire wants to use mana per second. I'm not really sure. Uh, Chris Wilson, if you're out there, can we get something more universal for all Righteous Fire builds to potentially benefit from? Is something something else, <laughs> if possible? Uh well, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays, except for this Sunday because of the league launch, at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.